this is Allison Price, the Director of Marketing and Community from the Open Infra Foundation. I am so excited to be tuning in virtually to the Open Infra Days Mexico, and I very much wish I could be there with you in person, but hopefully I can be soon. It's been several years, I think it was 2016 when we were last together in person with the Open Infra community in Mexico. This is a picture from the hackathon in Guadalajara where several teams competed. And I think over the past couple of years with the pandemic and all of the challenges of not being able to meet in person, it's still great to remember that we are still one community. We are Open Infra and we're all here to collaborate together. So I'm excited to kind of report some of the progress that the community has been making over the past couple of years, and hopefully we can collaborate soon in person as well as virtually. Some recent news last month um, we had, or two months ago, we had the Open Infra Summit return after two and a half years to Berlin. Um, all of the recordings are now live, so you can check out that playlist to see what users were talking about their production use cases around projects like OpenStack, Encada containers, projects that you're going to hear at Open Infra Days Mexico. So check out those recordings to learn what the global community is doing with these projects. At the Open Infra Summit, we actually had a tie for our annual Super User Awards. And it was exciting to see um, companies that are using different Open Infra projects receive recognition for their open source collaboration and innovation. So Ant Group won based on their Kata Containers use case, which I'll talk about more in a minute. And OVH Cloud won based on their massively op scaled OpenStack powered public cloud. So congratulations to these two teams. If you're wanting to learn more about OpenStack or Kata Containers, they are great teams to learn from. Like I mentioned, Ant Group has been doing a lot around Kata containers, and part of their team is actually responsible for launching it several years ago in 2017. Um, and they just published a best practices white paper with Kata containers that is available on the Kata containers website. So if you're looking into container security or you would like to understand how Kata containers is deployed in production, check out this white paper and learn more on how you can deploy it and also get involved in the community upstream. This year, we're also celebrating two significant milestones for Open Infra Foundation supported projects. Kata Containers is turning five years old after we launched it in 2017 at KubeCon in Austin, Texas. This October, we'll be celebrating the five year anniversary at KubeCon Detroit. So if you're attending, please join us for the celebration. We are also celebrating 10 years of Zool after it was launched in 2012. Zool has made a lot of impact and momentum, especially across production use cases. Their production users span a lot of industries, including retail, automotive, as well as public clouds. So it's very exciting to see all of the diverse use cases and how Zool is continuing to transform the CICD industry. In addition to the Berlin Summit we had earlier this year, we have two other upcoming events. So in October, we are bringing back the developer and operator communities to collaborate in the working event called the Project Teams Gathering or the PTG. So if you're interested, you can sign up your Open Infra Project team now and registration and sponsorship are now available at openinfra.dev slash PTG. We're also excited that next year, the summit will return again to Vancouver from June 13th through the 15th. Sponsorship and registration are going to open in early September. So please bookmark your calendars to ensure that you join the global community in Vancouver at the Open Infrastructure Summit. So before we look at what's ahead with all of these different projects, let's look at where we've come from. So 95% of the world's IT spend is on premises and not in the cloud. This was said by the Amazon CEO, but when was it said? You know, personally, when I was first showed this quote, I was like, you know, I think it was probably said in 2010 when a lot of the different cloud providers were just getting started and OpenStack was becoming an open source alternative to the proprietary options. So that was my initial guess. Color me shocked when I saw that it was actually said earlier this year, April 14th, 2022, it was said that 95% of the IT spend is on premises and not in the cloud. So we currently are only looking at 5% of the market. 
So when you look at the entire market for global IT spend, that is 3.6 trillion USD. That's a lot of money, and that is a significant market. So 5% of that, the cloud spend currently as of this year is 180 billion USD. While that is still a significant market size, that it, there is a lot more potential for this to be shown. Now, we're at Open Infra Days Mexico this week, so I also wanted to zero in on the cloud market in this region. So it's been said that by 2027, the data center market in Latin America will reach 9 billion USD. So this market just here in this region of the world is gaining significant momentum. And it's showing that this is a very strategic region to accelerate the growth of the cloud market over the next several years. Now, of course, when you think about market share with the cloud market, you think, OK, well, of course, Amazon is number one. And then, you know, with 33 percent. But who's number two with 27 percent? You your mind may initially go to Google or maybe it'll go to Microsoft or Alibaba in China. What's really shocking and really interesting for our open source community is that it's actually the other. So the other category accounts for the second spot in the share of the cloud market in this data. So when you look at, you know, who is the other, that's us. That is the OpenStack powered ecosystem, the open source alternative to these proprietary options. That looks like over 180 OpenStack public cloud data centers around the world including several in Mexico and Latin America. This is significant. This is something to show that the proprietary alternatives have something to worry about when looking at the open source alternative that is OpenStack, that is Kubernetes, that is Ceph, that is Kata Containers, that is Zool. This is powerful momentum that needs to have a lot of integration points, which relies on one thing, collaboration. And this is why I'm so excited to see an event like this happening and very honored to be here speaking because it requires all of us coming together, not one person, not one organization, not even one foundation can make this software work and make it work together in production. It requires all of us coming together. It requires many organizations writing this software together. You know, one organization can't drive the open source ecosystem that we have built around OpenStack or Kata containers or Kubernetes or Ceph. It requires all of us to come together with all of our different interests and make software that runs in production successfully. And here's why. When you look at proprietary development and even just a single vendor open source development, the investment and the return are very parallel. They don't necessarily have impact on the greater good. But when you look at open development, you have all of these organizations coming together and it really broadens the return on investment for all of the organizations involved. And this is what the Open Infra Foundation is at heart. We are an open development focused organization in global community. Right now, we have a vast ecosystem of organizations spanning the entire world, including a lot of organizations that have offices, data centers, and team members in Latin America, including Whitestack, Red Hat, and Canonical, just to name a few. We're excited to continue investing in this region. As you saw, the cloud market is continuing to grow exponentially, and it's important that we as the others band together and collaborate to ensure that open source has a voice here. Just over the last year since we launched the Open Infra Foundation in January of 2021, so in a year and a half, we've seen a 33% growth in foundation members who are coming together for this common mission. All of these organizations see what we're doing and they see the impact that open development has and they want to collaborate and be a part of it. And I think that this really emphasizes and reinforces that collaboration across organizations works. This is something that organizations want to invest in, they want to be a part of, and they want to see that open source make momentum like projects like OpenStack and Kubernetes has. But I often get asked, how does it work? So how do all of these ecosystem members with what you would think as competing interests, you know, they everyone has different products, everyone has different customers. How does it work to get everyone into the same place, collaborating on a common mission? In 2013, Jonathan Bryce, the executive director of the Open Infra Foundation, introduced a concept. 
that in order for an open source project to grow and be successful, you have to balance three forces. And while this may seem like a Star Wars reference or something that doesn't really relate to software, I promise you that it does. So what you need are users who are actually using the software and consuming these services. You have developers who are building these products and learning from the users on what they can make better and more sustainable. And then you have the ecosystem that's actually hiring the developers to work on these projects and building, pro building products around them to commercialize and gain momentum for the industry as a whole. Without the developers, without the users, without the ecosystem, what's the point? How can you develop a community without these three forces? And how can you do it sustainably? Now let's look at OpenStack for an example of how these three forces come together. So with OpenStack, over the past 12 years, we have assembled over 450 organizations, 8,500 developers, and users deploying 25 million cores of OpenStack in production. Like that is incredible scale. It's a testament to this open development model that I just spoke about and how OpenStack has become this opportunity, this, this force to reckon with against the proprietary alternatives. But let's look at that in practice. Let's take the developer force first. So how does this work? There are things that we have developed to cater to this team to ensure their success in the global community. We have project teams gathering, which are events where they can meet virtually or in person to get work done for upcoming releases. Onboarding and mentoring to bring in the next generation of developers to continue building the software and making sure that it's sustainable long term. Release management to ensure that there is actual releases going out. Software is nothing if there are no releases. And then infrastructure support to make sure that there is a foundation for this software to live. So once we have the software built, then what do we do for the users? We create forums where they can share feedback. We had one a couple of months ago at the Berlin Summit where they can share feedback with the developers and the ecosystem on what features may need additional work or what features should be added in future releases. We have working groups and SIGs to talk about common pain points and how other users and operators are overcoming those challenges. We have keynotes, community events like this one, and industry events where operators can share their use cases for others to learn from, because that's what we're all doing. We're learning from each other and learning how people are putting open source into practice, and that's exactly what users can benefit from learning from each other. And we also have the ecosystem. So we've built brand building and trademark programs, as well as working groups where they can collaborate and use the common trademarks and common branding to show that they are indeed one unit that are sharing a common brand, which is OpenStack. And then we also have the summit and online marketplace where they can feature their common products and show that they are indeed OpenStack powered. Now, to make all of this work, everything that I've just shown is how we pull resources from multiple companies so we can innovate together. That way we can allocate these resources efficiently based on the needs of the project, which are often unique based on the life cycle of the project. Take OpenStack, for example. These more than 450 companies have come together and they have collaborated to deliver over 25 releases. The next release is in two months and then we're done with the Latin alphabet. So they have employed more than 8,000 contributors. And what has this done? It's built 25 million cores of production and created a $7.7 billion market just for OpenStack. Again, this is significant and it couldn't be done without the others. All of us coming to collaborate across organization, across country, across foundation. But you know, we talk about OpenStack a lot and we talk about all of the successes and the significant market that we've created, but let's look at another example. So like I said, we're celebrating five years of Kata containers later this year after it was launched in December 2017 at KubeCon in Austin. This project started with three organizations that came together to solve for container security. Now, five years later, look at all of these organizations that have come together to drive a common mission. They're all coming together in one place, allocating resources so they can innovate together and deploy Kata containers in production. 
this is exciting. This is what we want to bring everyone together to do. And the reason that I'm giving these examples is that we've actually just launched a new project model where you and your open source project can achieve the successes of OpenStack, Kata Containers, of Zool to build the next decade of open infrastructure. You can find out more details at openinfra.dev slash projects slash hosting. So come learn from us about the three forces, about the model that we've built around open development, because we are open to build the next decade of open infrastructure, and we want to work with you. Join us as we openly collaborate over the next decade, and let's work together to build that next decade of open infrastructure. The work starts now, so please join us. Thank you.